Welcome back to Simbright Fashion Academy YouTube channel for another interesting tutorial. In this class, I'll be teaching you how to make this beautiful structure, the detail on a bustier or even on a corset, as you can see right here. So you can see the structure given to this beautiful dress, and that is what you are going to learn in this class, okay? So you can style it the way you want, to your taste, you can make so many numbers of it. So if this is what you want to learn in this class, please stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank so you. in today's class, I'll be showing you how to make uh, this beautiful structure detail on, the, on this beautiful dress, as you are seeing right there on the thumbnail. Okay, so for this particular tutorial, we'll be working with our fabric. And the fabric we are making use of here is a dull face satin fabric, as you can see. So I'm making this structure detail for two, two of it right here. So whatever I do here, that is exactly what you are going to do for the rest of it. So, so right here, I'm working with the width of 7 inches and the length of 20 inches. Okay, so if you are cutting your fabric, make it 7 by 20. So this 7 by 20 inches we have here, that is what I have here too for this. So if you are making six of it, it means you are making 7 inches width by 20 inches length for six numbers. So I'm making two number right here. So from here to here is 20 inches and from here to here is 7 inches. The same with this, 20 inches, 7 inches. Now I'll be working with my crinoline. This is 3 inches crinoline and that is what we are going to use for this structure detail. So this 3 inches crinoline from here to here is 3 inches. That is what we are going to use for this. And because we are working with 3 inches crinoline, that is why the width is also 7 inches. Because by the time we fold it uh, into to have 6, plus one inch for stitching allowance. That is the seven inches we are working with, okay? So I also have my boning. We'll be working with a nylon or plastic boning. You can also use your, uh, your nylon boning. So the nylon boning we are using here is half inch. You can see that half, exactly half inch. Okay, unless you need a bolder uh, boning, okay? That's a, a wider one can also do that so whatever thing we do here you can restructure it to meet your taste all right so the first thing we are going to do right here is to sew fold this fabric by two so wherever you want to be the right side for you so this is my right side I'll simply go back to my machine now and I'm going to stitch I'm going to stitch 0 0.5 inch from end to end, I'm going to sew at 0 0.5 inch. So at the end of the day, I'll have exactly 3 inches. Okay? I'll have exactly 3 inches. So you need to sew, cut exactly um, 7 inches. That is when placed on fold, you should be having 3 and half. So I'm going to sew this on my machine for the two right now. you see me placing them on fold. So I'll sew off now, then I'll come back to show you what next to do. Alright, so now I'm done sewing the both of them. So what I will advise you to do is to trim off the 0 0.5 inch uh, seam allowance before you turn. Okay, so you need to clean off the edges before it is turned. So I'll do that for for the both of them all right so i've cleaned up the edges so once you clean up the edges the next thing you will do is to turn it to the right side turn them to the right side so the next thing i'm going to do is to measure my crinoline so i'm going to cut my crinoline at exactly the length which is 20 inches okay so I just cut 20 inches all right so 
now i've cut 20 20 inches for both so i'll pick them one after the other and i'll start inserting them okay so i'll just insert it into Can you see? So I've inserted it in now. So you can see it has started to give that structure we desire. So if you want, you can leave this. To me, I would say you leave the seam allowance at the center. Okay? Because this part, once we fold it now, is going to serve as the back. That is going to be at the inside. But if you don't want, you can also bring it to the side. As you can see right there on the thumbnail, the seam allowance is on the side. Okay, so probably because once you fold it, you wouldn't want to see any line uh, below. So we can do exactly what we have on the thumbnail by pushing it to the side. And it's still fine and good. So the next thing I'm going to do now with this i'm using to demonstrate i'll still insert this on the other one so i'll now come in and find the midpoint of what i have within here and here and that is where i'm going to sew my boning casing so i'm going to sew my boning casing at the midpoint so from here to here you can see it's three inches and the midpoint here is half an inch so i'm going to sew carefully I'll just mark one and half, one and half. So once I get to my machine now, I'm going to sew from not on the one and half because I'm creating a boning casing for this, for this nylon boning. Can you see? So it's going to sit at the center. Okay, so another thing you can also do is at that midpoint, once you place this to get it accurately, you can just go and do this. And you see, I just made lines. So I need to cut this before I do that. So let me just measure it so it doesn't keep wobbling up and down. So now I'm not going to measure 20 inches for my boning. You know this is a thick boning and it will not get to the end of the seam allowance. So I'm going to measure 19 inches for my boning. 19 inches for my body and once I've done that I'm going to file my body so don't forget to you know file the edges because um, while inserting this this part if it's rough it might be difficult for you to insert so I'm filing the both edges as you can see just to make sure that there's no sharp edge all right so i will now come again and place it this way you can see what i did at that midpoint i placed it at the center so i will carefully mark out the lines okay i'll carefully mark out the lines. so once i get to my machine now i'll just follow the boning uh, lines i marked and it will be very easy for me and you see that it will be very easy. So you can see the lines right now. So I'm going to sew it right on top of my crinoline. I'm going to sew right on top this way. So now I want to start sewing now. So make sure you have this um, edge by the side. Okay. So it's going to actually be by the side. So I'm arranging it. I'm going to sew on top of my crinoline so you have to keep your hands straight make sure your hands are straight so once I get to that line I'm going to follow the next line and I'm going to also sew straight. All right, so. All 
right, so now I've inserted my nylon boning, okay, uh, into the casing. And when I put it together, the boning is actually uh, too structured. So I now thought of using my regilin boning, okay, because regilin boning is really more flexible. So I think working with, with regilin will be better, so you'll be able to adjust it to your taste. So this is the casing I've made, as you can see. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm still making use of my regilin boning, and the regilin boning remains 0 0.5 inch, okay? So I will advise you use your regilin boning instead of the nylon boning. So I'll just go into the casing right now and insert the regilin boning. Okay, so I found the regilin boning more flexible to work with. Started it to the end. So these are the two of them right now. So you can see this is more rigid and this is more flexible. So the regilin boning gives you exactly what we have on the thumbnail. Can you see? So when I fold the regilin boning, when I put it together to sew, you can see it gives more, uh, more than, it's more flexible and this is it. So these are the difference, okay? So the one for nylon boning will give you a rounded structure, while the one for regilin boning will give you exactly what we have on the thumbnail. So I'm going to remove this, the nylon boning, I'll take it away. And I'll cut my regilin boning of 19 inches and insert here, right? I'm done inserting the regilin, so it's more flexible. So all I'm going to do is to put it together, put them together, as you can see. And it depends on where you actually want to insert. So, but for this, since I'm demonstrating what we have on the thumbnail, I'm doing or demonstrating the first two. The first two you are seeing right there. So the first two, I'll put it together now. I'll go over to my machine. I'm going to stitch. So now you can see what it looks like when I stitched it together. So if this is your bustier you are working with right now, this is your bustier and you have a yoke attached to it. The first thing you are going to do is to sew this. You are going to sew it this way. Okay, you sew it this way. So by the time you lay your lining, you know how we usually sew our lining, okay? Lay your yoke, your lining. So if you place it this way and stitch first, you just go into your bustier and stitch. Then place your yoke, your lining the way you know how. At the end of the day, it comes out for you like this. Can you see that? It comes out like this for you as a structured design. So that is how to sew it. It's very easy to sew. So just go ahead and place it this way. Attach anywhere you want to attach it. Once you turn with your lining, it automatically steps up this way. Okay? So the lining, this will be in between the fabric and your lining. And you stitch and the lining turns it and gives it a neat finish. Even if you want to attach a yoke, just the normal way you attach your yoke, but make sure your fabric comes first, this one comes second, your yoke comes third, and your lining comes last. Then after turning, turning everything, you have it neatly finished this way, okay? So that is how we come to the end of this tutorial, and I believe this class was helpful to you. So if you are new to this channel, please kindly subscribe, turn on your notification bell, to receive videos like this every day, like this video, share to family and friends, drop your comment on the comment section and your suggestions as well. Thank you for coming. See you in the next class. Bye.